Hi, my name is Caitlin, and today we're going to talk about tropical cyclones and how they impact the Great Barrier Reef. I'm also going to address a question I get asked fairly frequently, and that question is, is the Great Barrier Reef dead? And to answer that... It's not, I promise you. It's not dead. Promise. Thank you, promise. So we're going to talk about tropical cyclones today. It is a lesser known threat to the Great Barrier Reef. Often we think about threats to the Great Barrier Reef, you're thinking plastic pollution, overfishing, coral bleaching, or people walking on the coral. However, one of the most devastating impacts on the reef are cyclones. Often when people think of cyclones, they're like, oh yeah, you know, it's just gone through a marina and ripped up everyone's expensive yacht. Yeah, that, that, that hurts. Uh, and then you also think about the damage it does to people. But sometimes we forget that it actually damages our reef too. So a cyclone is like a hurricane, but in the southern hemisphere, which means it spins in the opposite direction to the northern hemisphere. And cyclones can be absolutely devastating. Some cyclones can have waves that reach up to 15 meters high. That's almost an entire coral bommie out of the water. And if you have that kind of force hitting the reef, it's going to just shatter our delicate corals and pull up all the soft corals and just cause devastation. A cyclone can lead to an entire bommy or an entire reef structure being completely stripped of coral. You can see in the video here, this is what we believe is damage caused by a cyclone called Cyclone Urine that ripped through the Great Barrier Reef a year before this footage was taken. And it is really heartbreaking to jump into the water and see a reef like this. Uh, after Cyclone Urin, there was a dive site that we really loved. It was called Nolan's Wall and it's on Tedford Reef. And we would dive that all the time. And there's a path from one side of the reef to the wild side of the reef. Now the wild side of the reef is a reef that's exposed to the open ocean. And it's often really beautiful and it has you know, some sharks swimming through and some big fish and some eagle rays and it's just got that extra pout of life. It's absolutely beautiful. So we used to love diving it, and we still do, but to personally witness the effects of what Cyclone Neeran did to our reef, there would be, that Passover would be at about five meters depth, and there would be a table coral there, literally the size of a table, like it was five meters long. It was a huge table coral that was just smashed into five or six pieces. Myself and a crewmate attempted to relodge this table coral back onto the reef to give it another chance. But there were some pieces of that coral that were so heavy, neither of us could lift it underwater. So we just had to leave it to die. Thankfully, some of the table coral has managed to survive. It's re-anchored onto the rock and it's doing okay. It's not great at the moment. And this is a year later, after Cyclone Urine. And there was lots of other devastation because that swim over used to be legit a scene out of Finding Nemo. Just beautiful soft corals waving in the current, that beautiful table coral. You had all the fish swimming over the wild side into the sort of protected side. And it was beautiful and to first hand witness the devastation of a small cyclone. The most devastating cyclone that has hit the east coast of Australia was Cyclone Yasi. Monster Cyclone Yasi smashes into far north Queensland, causing massive damage and heartbreak. Good evening. The worst tropical storm in living memory has left residents in far north Queensland picking up the pieces. 
Evacuations are underway in far north Queensland as locals and tourists flee the path of monster cyclone Yasi. The wind felt and sounded like a freight train, roaring over us for six terrifying hours. You can actually hear the wind screaming through the windows. Cyclone Yasi was one of the most devastating cyclones recorded on the east coast of Australia. It was a Category 5 cyclone with wind speeds exceeding 290 kilometres per hour, which is 180 miles per hour for you Americans. And Cyclone Yasi caused millions of dollars in damage. And according to Roger Beden et al. in their paper, impacts and recovery from severe tropical Cyclone Yasi on the Great Barrier Reef said that Cyclone Yasi caused the greatest amount of reef damage in a 24-hour period since 1985, where about 15% of the Great Barrier Reef received some level of damage. So, to give you perspective, how big is 15% of the Great Barrier Reef? The Great Barrier Reef is measured to be 348,700 kilometers squared. That is big. That is entire ecosystems gone. That's fish colonies gone. That's breeding stocks gone. That is a devastating impact to our reef, to our fisheries, and let's not even start to say how much damage that caused people on land, but it damaged the reef for sure. And now, you know, the Great Barrier Reef is really good at recovering from natural disasters. Coral bleaching events, cyclones, the Great Barrier Reef has seen it all before, in its existence. However, if we have a coral bleaching event and a cyclone and another coral bleaching event and a cyclone, the reef is really going to start to struggle and it probably won't be able to handle the frequency of these natural disasters to the reef. And whilst these natural disasters are not new to the reef, the frequency of them are, and this is due to climate change, this is due to global warming, weather systems changing, and it is a very scary thing to be witnessing firsthand today, this year, this month. We need to make a change. We need to consider the effects of climate change because climate change is the number one threat to the Great Barrier Reef. It's not coral bleaching, it's not cyclones, it's climate change. Because climate change causes an increase of these natural events. And the reef is going to really struggle to bounce back because it takes years for the coral reef that's been absolutely devastated to come back. And coral only really spawns once a year. So it becomes increasingly difficult for the coral reefs to bounce back from all these natural disasters. So how do we combat climate change? Well, there's a couple of things we can do to combat climate change. One of them is to think about ourselves and what we use. Think sustainably. Think about, do I need to leave this light on? Can I walk to work? Can I ride a bike to work? Think about carpooling. Maybe bring some of your workmates along if they're on the way. Think about how you can save on electricity, because in the end that also saves you money. And then also think about the bigger companies as well. Think about you know, the big oil and gas companies. Think about carbon offsets. So if you can encourage these companies to become carbon neutral, then that's awesome. And carbon neutral doesn't mean they have to stop using carbon or stop producing carbon. It just means that they are putting an effort to try to offset the effects of climate change. So planting more trees would be awesome. 
because trees take carbon directly from the atmosphere and turn them into oxygen. So planting native trees in the areas that they work try to offset this negative impact so we can still maintain our lifestyle. So we can still maintain profits, but we are working towards becoming carbon neutral. We're working towards planting trees where they've been cleared in the past. Bringing back natural habitats on land and encouraging big companies to become carbon neutral. Encouraging big companies to plant trees and also maybe plant a cheeky tree or two yourself. If you plant native trees, then you're going to encourage uh, elusive animals to come into your yard. So you might have that beautiful bird that you only see deep in forests come into your yard because you have its favorite flower growing. And it also improves the quality of air that you breathe around your house. And it's also, yeah, it's good. It's good to plant trees. That's all I got to say is that it's a good thing to plant trees. So let's think sustainable. Let's use our environment sustainably so that we are able to make our world better, to make our planet cleaner, to make it greener. And so we can live in a genuinely better world. And then we can still enjoy our Great Barrier Reef, our forests our tigers in India, our kangaroos in Australia, our parrotfish in the Great Barrier Reef, and our great white sharks in South Australia. You know? It's all there and it's all in balance. And if we find our balance, then that'll be a perfect world. Thank you for watching the video and I hope to catch you in the next one. Thank you. Mm -hmm.